Hello, I'm Angie Britsky. I'm a librarian at the Golden Hollywood Regional Branch. Welcome to this afternoon's informative program, What's New with 2021 Neighborhood Council Elections. Our presenter today is Sarah Gonzalez. Sarah Gonzalez is a project coordinator with the City Clerk's Office Election Division. She has been with the Election Division for over a decade and oversees the City Employee Poll Worker Program and the training of community poll workers. Since 2018, she has worked in outreach focusing on voter education. She has partnered with LAPL for the source and youth citizenship ceremonies. She loves engaging the public and how information empowers Angelinos to ask more questions, educate others, and mobilize to participate in the voting process. Please welcome Sarah Gonzalez. Hi there, can you hear me all right? Hey Angie, can you hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear you. Oh, there you are, okay. <laughs> Thanks for having me, I'm happy to be here. I'm excited to talk about the NC elections, they are underway. All right, so I'm going to share a little bit of information about the 2021 Neighborhood Council elections. For those of you who don't know about Neighborhood Councils, LA City has a really special way of representing each individual unique neighborhood in Los Angeles, and that's through the Neighborhood Council system. It's a way that people can have direct access to City Hall and advocate for their neighborhood's unique needs. And so uh, each of these Neighborhood Councils has a board that is elected by stakeholders of that neighborhood. And I'll get into a little bit about what a stakeholder is and how to qualify as one in just a moment. But something to know about the 2021 Neighborhood Council elections is that they are all vote by mail. So as a result, of course, of the COVID-19 pandemic, we wanna make sure that everybody stays safe. So we've implemented an all vote by mail vote model for this election. So just a little bit of background, there are 99 neighborhood councils throughout the city of Los Angeles. That's quite a lot. If you don't know, there's 15 uh, council districts. So there's plenty more uh, neighborhood councils. And that's because, as I mentioned, every neighborhood is so unique. So when they form a neighborhood council, it's with its own unique boundaries. They draw up their own unique bylaws that direct how things are run, especially elections. And examples of people who are part of neighborhood councils are people who are renters in the area, business owners, property owners, and people who have a special interest in the community. We also have youth representatives. So if you are uh, 14, 15, 16 years old, look into your neighborhood council and see if there is a youth seat. Um, and that varies per NC, but there may be a way for you to join or be appointed and be a part of a neighborhood council as well. So who's eligible to vote in a neighborhood council? Uh, well, something that's very special and different uh, from neighborhood council elections, as opposed to our city, state, and federal elections, is that you don't need to be a U.S. citizen to participate. So if you are somebody who has, um, as I mentioned, a stake in the community, uh, but aren't a U.S. citizen, you can vote in neighborhood council elections. Also, age is different uh, in those state federal elections. You have to be 18 years or older. And as I mentioned, there are youth seats and opportunities for youth to vote, ranging from ages 14 to 17, depending on your individual NC and what the bylaws say about age. Um, so in many cases, if you're 16 or older, you can vote in neighborhood council election. All right. So um, what qualifies you, again, to vote or to run? Well, we there are still uh, opportunities for people to look into running as a candidate for this year. So please visit us at neighborhoodinfo.lacity.org. That is where you can type in an address related to um, how you relate to that neighborhood. So for example, if you live at an address, go ahead and type in the address at neighborhoodinfo.lacity.org, and it'll show you a lot of information. It'll show you who your council district representative is, which LAUSD uh, district you happen to live in. It'll also show you which neighborhood council that address uh, belongs to. And so that way you can look into which neighborhood council you want to participate in. Now that's just where you live. So if you take where you work, let's type in the address of where you work 
and see which neighborhood council that is, right? So you might be able to qualify for that neighborhood council as somebody who's employed there. Or if you own a business in an area that is not the area that you live in, that's another way that you could qualify, right? So you can type in any of these ways that you have an interest um, into neighborhood info and find out what neighborhood council is that area. We also really encourage you to look at the individual websites for uh, any neighborhood council. They will list when they meet. And of course, everything is happening virtually right now. So it's actually a little bit easier for you to join and uh, attend a meeting, right? You could do it right from the comfort of your own home right now. So I would look into what neighborhood council you belong to and then also find out when they're meeting and see if you can join in virtually so that you can get a sneak peek about what it is that your council does. Some examples of what neighborhood councils do um, are advocate for needs that they have in their community. So if there are certain issues like maybe uh, safety or maybe clean streets, maybe they have an issue uh, with a lot of maybe garbage pickup, et cetera, those are things that they would appeal and speak to our city representatives directly about and advocate and try to improve. They also do receive city funds, so they are able to, as a board, decide how are they going to spend these funds to improve their area. So they do have a lot of um, influence in the city, as well as the power to make their own decisions and uh, spend their money uh, the way that they think the community would benefit best from it. So let's talk about the 2021 election. As I mentioned, it's going to be all vote by mail and that's for everybody's health and safety right now. So what we've done is we've created an online vote by mail application portal. So everyone who votes in an NC election has to apply to receive a ballot. Now, the reason is that some neighborhood councils are what's called self-affirmation, meaning you just tell us that you live in that neighborhood or that you work in that neighborhood council and you uh, will fill out your application and attest that that is correct, like by a penalty of perjury agreement. And we will take your word for it and the, uh, that you are affirming that this is all true and that you live there. Some neighborhood councils are what's called documentation required, and that's per their bylaws. So that means that if you would like to say that you have a stake in this neighborhood council, you do have to present documentation that proves that you are who you are, meaning a photo ID. I am Sarah Gonzalez, and here is my photo ID that says so. Um, age, because again, there are age requirements for voting in the election. So I might need to prove that I'm older than 16. And even though I look older than 16, I need a document that proves so, right? And then I need to prove what my stake in the community is. Perhaps all of that is with my driver's license. Perhaps I live in that neighborhood council. So that takes care of my identity, my age, as well as the address that is on my driver's license that I live there. So if you go to our website, which is uh, clerk.lecity uh, forward slash elections, you're going to click on the banner that says vote by mail application. And so you will apply for a vote by mail ballot. Now you can make an application for every NC that you have a stake in. So it can be the one that I live in, the one that I work in, the one that I volunteer in, the one that I attend church in, but I will need to uh, submit an application for each one of those NCs and request which ballot I'd like to receive. What I want you to know is that we are available to answer all of your questions and even to walk you through the application process. So don't be uh, worried if this is your first time applying for a ballot online, please feel free to give us a call and we'd be happy to walk you through the process while you're applying for your vote by mail ballot. And then after you apply for your vote by mail ballot, as long as it's complete and if it's documentation required, we have the correct documentation, we will go ahead and mail you your ballot. We do review your application. So if it's incomplete in any way or if we're missing a document there, we'll make sure to give you a call and email you uh, so that we can make sure that your application is processed completely and we get your ballot to you as soon as possible. Inside the ballot that is sent to you, there will be instructions on how to vote using your ballot and how to return it. All of the vote by mail ballots will have a return pre-posted envelope for you and we even put the return label on there already for you. So uh, it's really easy to return. We will also have drop boxes similar to the drop boxes that we used in the general um, presidential election a few months ago. However, 
those uh, drop boxes will only be made available five days prior to the election day for your region. And it will, of course, be locked uh, by the time the polls close virtually, right, uh, on the election day for your region. So those will be made available on our website. So if you don't want to mail it back, you're welcome to use those small limited number of those drop boxes that will become available prior to the election day for your region. All right, I do encourage you to follow us on social media. We are posting when the vote by mail periods open for each region, when they close. We're posting uh, when ballots are being mailed out. We're posting a lot of really helpful information for you to follow along. And so I really encourage you, if you aren't already following us on Instagram and Facebook to, uh, to join us so that we can give you updated information. And if this is your first time participating in a neighborhood council election, I really thank you. Uh, it's, you know, just like any democratic process, the more, the merrier, but the more voices that are heard, the truer, um, the truer it is that we really got to hear what Angelinos are really feeling and what it is that they want and what's most important to them. So we really hope that uh, you will participate and encourage anybody that you know that has a stake in a neighborhood council in Los Angeles to participate as well. I'll turn it back over to you, Angie. I just realized there are a couple of questions. That was amazing, Sarah. Thank you. Um, is the ballot only available in English? That's a great question. Um, so if there are any um, language uh, needs that a community member has, they can. Um, ask it to, uh, we can, we'll be happy to provide it rather. Um, as far as assistance with filling out the online application, the online portal is in English. However, we do have our language operators that can help walk somebody through the process. We do also have paper applications. Um, and again, those are in English as well, but we, our language operators can help people if they would rather receive one in person and perhaps have a family member um, help them out. I do also want to uh, let you know that Anybody can have help with the application process, just as in regular elections, when you are able to have help, uh, especially for language in the booth, you can have help with the application as well. Oh, great. Thank you. Yeah, no okay. So I have another question. So okay. say I have stakes in multiple neighborhoods. I volunteer in one neighborhood. I work in another and live in another. Mm -hmm. um, and so I potentially qualify for all three neighborhood councils. Do I have to fill out an application? application for each? Correct, yes. So um, the neighborhood councils, there's 12 different election regions. And so the way that they are being handled is kind of in a rolling basis. So the first one to come up um, isn't region one, it's actually region five, which I believe your neighborhood council is a part of, right? Hollywood, yeah. I'm sorry, your library. Yeah, your, labor, your library is a part of region five. So uh, that means that uh, this coming Tuesday is the end of the vote by mail period for region five, meaning folks in that region have until Tuesday to apply online to receive their uh, vote by mail ballot. Now, as you mentioned, you, uh, for example, work in region five. I'm not sure which region you also live in, but let's just assume that perhaps maybe you do live in region five as well. The way that it would go is you would uh, create your account and then you would uh, start a new application process for that individual neighborhood council. So in this instance, let's say the Hollywood Neighborhood Council. Um, and once you're in the application for that neighborhood council, you have the opportunity to select if you live, work, own property, and have a community interest. So you can select all of those that apply to you. Um, you also have the opportunity to select which ballot or ballots you'd like to receive. And all of that will depend on the NC you're applying for per their bylaws. For example, some neighborhood councils allow you to receive only one ballot. So if that was the case, as someone applying for that neighborhood council, you would have to select which one of the ballots you'd like, even if you qualify for, let's say, the renter ballot as well as the business owner ballot. So per the bylaws, you would have to select one ballot. If you are applying for a neighborhood council that allows you to receive two ballots, or for instance, Hollywood Hills West allows you to receive up to 10 ballots, um, then you would have to select the ballots that you'd like to receive. And then depending again on the neighborhood council, either affirm that that's true or provide documentation that proves that you are a stakeholder in those ways that you're applying. So 
It's definitely individual to each of the neighborhood councils because they have such unique bylaws, but the portal is set up to allow you uh, and instruct you on which uh, things you can qualify for and try to help you to qualify for as many ballots as you are eligible. If there's any confusion while you're inside the portal, as I mentioned, please give us a call because we're happy to walk you through the process. And of course, every application is being reviewed uh, by us. And if we think perhaps, oh, Angie uh, should have uh, selected two ballots because she's eligible to receive two, but she only selected one, we will give you a call and let you know, hey, Angie, if you're still eligible for another ballot, would you like to vote on that second ballot? And we'll help you qualify for it if we need any more documentation, for example. Thank you. That was super helpful. Um, okay, so the next question is, um, when will I receive the ballot after submitting the application and what should I do if I don't receive it? Great question. So the when is a bit of a variable. We receive a lot of a lot of applications and uh, so we're doing our best to process them. But for us, we'd like to make sure that we process them accurately more than speedily. <laughs> so um, I can't say that it's um, one to two to three days after you receive it. Um, as soon as we're done qualifying you as a voter, um, then we will be able to extract and prepare your ballot and send it off to you. So I, I don't have an exact timeline. I would give it about a week um, because we're trying our best to, to do it as efficiently as we can. Um, if you have any questions, again, we don't mind a phone call. So if you're wondering, hmm, where's my ballot? It's been maybe eight days and I, I'm getting antsy about it. Please feel free to call. It's very easy for us to look in on the portal. One thing I do wanna say is after you've logged in and created and submitted your application, you can log back in for updates. So when you log back into our online vote by mail portal, you'll have a tile for each of the neighborhood councils you've applied for. So if you apply to receive ballots for five different neighborhood councils, you'll have a tile for each and each one will have an update status. So it may see, say that your application was received. It may say that it's being reviewed. Um, it, then it may say that your ballot's been sent to you. So you're able to see that update status. And if you log on and you see a status that you're like, hmm, <laughs> what's, what, uh, what's going on and, and what's my timeline there, then you can, of course, feel free to call us and somebody will be able to log in and give you um, some more details. Sarah, what is that phone number again? I'm sorry, the phone number to reach us? Yes. Yes, that's going to be 213-978-0444. Uh, and uh, we'll be able to uh, transfer you to our vote by mail section. And if you require language assistance, we'll be able to transfer you to one of our language operators as well. So that's 213-978-0444. Perfect. Thank you. Um, and then I have one final question. Sure. Um, if I'm not familiar with the candidates, how do I find out more information about them? Yes, absolutely. So there is a ton of information on our website. So if you go to uh, clerk.lacity.org forward slash elections, you can see our uh, vote by mail portal. Of course, you can have a timeline per region that tells you all of the deadlines that you need to meet in order to participate. And of course, it also has a list of our certified candidates. So you're able to see who is running for which seat in your neighborhood council. Um, and let's see what else is a good one there, as well as the schedule for all of the election dates. So as I mentioned, each of the 12 regions have their own individual deadlines and their own individual um, election days. So it's important to know, especially if you are someone who's very involved in many different ways and are looking to vote in multiple neighborhood councils. So they each may fall under different regions. So you kind of want to keep those dates um, in order to make sure that you meet the deadlines. But yes, all of that, including candidate information and a photo, if they've included one, can all be found at our website. So that's going to be clerk.lacity.org forward slash elections. Excellent. Oh, this has been extremely helpful. Um, thank you so much, Sarah. And thank you for the folks that tuned in. And um, I look forward to uh, casting my vote. My vote. Yes, absolutely. Please, please uh, do encourage you and your entire household to participate if you have any stake in the community. So that means in any one of the neighborhood councils who are holding elections this year, if you live, work, own property, or have a special interest 
like perhaps you uh, attend a church or board a horse or are part of a club that meets within that neighborhood council. All of those are reasons and many, many more for you to participate and have your voice heard and help to elect your neighborhood council board for the coming session. And, and remember, our neighborhood councils do have a lot of influence in the community and are a really great way for you to have a more direct uh, line of communication to City Hall and advocate for the needs of your very special and unique individual neighborhood. Yes, yeah. this has been great. All right, so I think that wraps it up. Um, and yeah, thank you so much, Sarah. You're so welcome, thank you.